It's far too big for the UK and far too unavailable. Yet the magnificently named Ford F-150 Raptor is, in the correct circumstances, an utterly addictive, surprisingly competent high-performance pickup, as perhaps you'd expect it to be with a Ford GT engine in its nose and a four-wheel drive chassis that's been tuned to go pretty much anywhere. The Raptor also has a 10-speed gearbox with high and low ratios, so in reality it has no less than 20 forward gears. And this is what it's like to drive, not just on the road, but also in the dirt, going sideways through our favourite corner, chasing down an Audi RS3, and best of all, trying to squeeze its way through a typically English village. This thing feels really quite ridiculous on the move. Because apart from anything else, it is really quite fast. I mean, you'd expect it to be pretty fast with a 450 horsepower Ford GT engine in it, but it's the torque <laughs> that just takes your breath away. You just don't expect a 2.6 tonne vehicle to accelerate towards the horizon this fast or sound like this as it's doing so. <laughs> I mean, that's 100. There is something deeply fantastic about the Raptor but there's also something utterly absurd about it too. So, Mr. RS3 has just let rip and I'm on his tail. And at the moment, he's not getting anywhere. <laughs> I've got it in, uh, you can have it in two wheel drive high ratio and then you can have it in four wheel drive high ratio, four wheel drive low ratio, etc. But the I know four-wheel drive probably sounds as if it should be the fastest, but the most fun is two-wheel drive. And that Audi is not getting away. Well, it is a little bit, but not by anywhere near as much as that Audi driver thinks it should. <laughs> Chasing the RS3 around the track was a real eye-opener, mainly because the Raptor could actually stay with the Audi if driven with sufficient ambition. It shows just how quick the Raptor is in a straight line and the noises it made whilst doing so were thoroughly outrageous. I'm really kind of warming to this thing, I have to admit. I mean, the steering is feels more like a tiller than a steering system in that, you know, <laughs> you go like this and it just sways around all over the place. When you turn in to a corner, there's this kind of corresponding reaction that takes about two seconds to occur at the back of the car. It just kind of feels like it wants to fall over itself. But it does it in a really nice progressive way, so you can actually slide it around. In the dirt, the Raptor is a proper sideways monster. If you select rear wheel drive and then turn the traction control off, it'll basically drift until it runs out of fuel which is something that will happen quite fast, thanks to its 10 mpg fuel consumption. Through our favourite test track corner, the Raptor was once again miles more sorted than we thought it might be, staying composed even when it was dipping a wheel on the inside apex. The speed it could carry through here was deeply impressive. I mean, really, the Raptor was, was built by Ford Performance to be the ultimate off-road weapon that you can buy straight off the shelf. You know, you don't have to start modifying it by putting heavy duty dampers and springs in it. You can just basically go straight, straight to the Sahara Desert and fly straight across it. So really that's why it was built. So that's fine, but we're not in the Sahara Desert. And I have to admit that here in the middle of the UK, it does feel a little bit ridiculous. I think we need to go and take it to an English village and see just how ludicrous it is in that background and just how massive it's gonna look. And that's the problem with driving a Raptor in the UK, right there, in a nutshell. It is just too big, too clumsy and too ostentatious to fit in. And that's before you even mention its horrendous thirst for unleaded. But as a toy to wheel out on special occasions, it is some vehicle. As I said, in the right circumstances, it is completely brilliant. And for most of the rest of the time, 
It's absolutely absurd. 